Hey folks, we're going to talk about a few brief topics today. We're going to be talking about art direction and how I kind of categorize and break that down into inspiration versus actual reference. We'll look at a few big projects and how they approach that as well as a few of my own. And I'll show a little tip at the very end that really helps a lot of my images over the years. So let's begin. So guys, what you're seeing up on screen now are two of my later images and I've got plenty of comments on each of them regarding, you know, what did I reference? How did the research play into that? And so I just want to be in 100% transparent about all of that today. So what you're going to see underneath each side of the uh, respective images is my direct sort of reference sheets that I use for them. So of course on the left side, right, there's just a bunch of kind of architectural structures. Uh, and on the right side here, I mixed in a little bit of more of the environment, a little more of the flavor and form languages with that. Now, things get a little more interesting below each of those because I just don't rely on that reference. I like to kind of have a target, you know, visual aesthetic that I like to aim for after the initial sketches are completed. It helps me visualize my vision in terms of like, how will this look when it's complete? So on this side, I grabbed, you know, various types of images, images that I hold in high regard that I think are, are done rather well. Things that may reflect the style, the overall sort of visual flair of it, the vibe, maybe the color palette and overall tone of the image. I compile my favorite images, you know, similarly like that, all on one sheet like that. And that's going to serve as my, you know, inspiration. It really does inspire me to push my idea all the way to the finish. And you can see that here on the right uh, image as well. You know, various types of games, some production art. It really helped serve, you know, bringing my idea to full fruition. So in a sense, what I'm trying to show here is when I combined aspects of reality and when I make certain creative decisions focused toward a specific goal, in a sense, what I'm doing is art directing. I'm art directing myself. I have been doing that for years. Now, if you work for a studio, there'll be creative directors, there'll be art directors. If you're working independently on contracted projects as well, you'll get some art direction. That's all part of the industry. Now, art direction is absolutely critical in the development of many types of projects, from tabletop card games like Magic the Gathering to feature-length films and games. It helps ensure the clarity of a vision. Art direction communicates and manages the creative ideas and goals, and simply guides the artists or teams to a unified uh, goal. It's particularly useful if you are working on a long-term project, whether it's through a contract or a personal one or with a, a large team of people, keeps everybody on the same page. So let's go on, we'll look at a few different examples and, and see how different types of teams and projects can be art directed. First, let's look at Disney's Big Hero 6. Now on the reference side of things, the movie takes place in a fictional setting of San Fran, Tokyo, which obviously merges the two cities, San Francisco and Tokyo. The goal of this was to create a rich, believable world that both feels historic and new at the same time. Now on the inspiration side of things, Disney looked to its own past, drawing from 1961's 101 Dalmatians, and from that they really just took the shapes and proportions. These were offset dimensions that had a slight bit of wonkiness to them. Now the other part of this inspirational equation comes from the 1980s and 90s anime. Things like Ghost in the Shell and Akira, they took the detail and richness of these animes, the density of these textures, and really applied Disney's classical style to it with the proportions and shapes. This created a unique blend of visual interests from fairly contrasting styles. Next I'd like to show a brief example of a style guide. The Mirror's Edge series, while not groundbreaking in any sort of way, it's oozing with style. It takes place in the near future in a dystopian city where harsh governments and corporations really do set the tone. The developers at DICE set a fairly simple style guide outlining their aesthetic goals for the project. They wanted all facets of the design, from characters to the world, to feel believable, to be elegant, and to have a sense of attitude. Both the elegance and attitude are fairly contradicting adjectives, which is why I feel that world is very striking. Of course, the added bonus of this type of creative planning is that the project itself feels really focused and, of course, artistically unified. 
Typically, from my experience, a project will have an entire document dedicated to this. It's often called the style guide. It can be a dozen pages long, usually like in PDF format, to hundreds of pages long. They can be quite overwhelming. In fact, I've even turned some projects down entirely because of the art direction. They would send them to me after signing the NDA, I'd look over it, and be like, you know, <laughs> this project is not for me, and that's perfectly all right. So if you'd like to see one firsthand today, just go down to the description below, click the link, and it'll take you to see Naughty Dog's Uncharted 2's style guide in all its glory. This one's a few hundred pages along, it's a big team, it's a big project. But it really shows all their creative choices and why they made them, it's fantastic. As mentioned at the start, I'll show all you folks a simple little trick I've been doing for years that's kind of helped me along. As many of us do, we're working fairly isolated, probably by ourselves in our own home studios, and we're just trying to improve. A lot of us try to, you know, have specific art target goals. So what I usually do when I'm finished or when I think I'm nearing completion of an image, I simply grab the whole thing and drag it right into my particular style guide. Then I just make it about the same size of all the other images and completely surround it by that. Now, if I've done the image justice or if I've hit my, my goals, it should kind of fit right in there rather seamlessly. It should be fairly indistinguishable. That's my goal, that's my particular art direction for the project. So of course, when we're so invested in our own, it's hard to be that objective and clear sometimes. So this can kind of help. And then if it's not fitting, you have to be really honest to yourself. You have to really pick your image apart. You know, why is it not fitting? Is it the color? Is it the style? Is, you know, whatever the case may be. If you're really struggling to see the difference, maybe send it to a friend or some colleagues. You guys can be the judge in, in this particular case. Did I hit my creative goals? Does it fit in there in terms of, you know, what I was trying to do? Again, it can be challenging to tell when we're so invested in our own work. But it's a great way to see you know, how your project's going, and of course it, it really just helps you find out, right, if you're hitting those beats in the style that you want. I've been doing it for years, it's been helping me you know, not only escalate my own personal quality, but again, keep, keep myself on track for where I need to be with certain pieces. So let me know in the comments below if if you yourself, if I've, you do certain things like this, am I the only one doing that? Have you ever considered, you know, art direction uh, for your own projects? And of course, just have a great weekend and U.S. residents have a great Thanksgiving. Art direction is a way of curating and guiding one's work and vision. I recommend trying it out if you grasp the fundamentals and are working on developing a portfolio. It's not really for students still developing those earlier skills. If you do have a decent amount of work and you largely feel it's either you know unfocused, perhaps a disjointed and scattered, it also may benefit you. Put it to use on a three to six month personal project. All right, take care. Thank you for checking out my video. You can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing, liking, or commenting on my videos. You can find me on the web on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Those are the social media outlets I utilize. I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Masters Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning, and for more info, just send me an email. Also feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun, we do weekly hangouts, there's the challenges, and it's a great place to make friends. Take care.